Hello, I'm Srikant Bharadwaj and I'm going to talk about Heterogarnet, which is an interconnect modeling tool for modern heterogeneous systems. Heterogeneity in modern systems is growing by the day. Take the example of recent advances in die stacking and 2.5D chip integration technologies. These introduce in-package network heterogeneities that complicate the interconnect design. Some of these are already available commercially and advanced studies are being pursued in the academic and industrial research community. These systems come with a lot of heterogeneity within the interconnect. Even a simple 2.5D processor architecture like this, which includes multiple chiplets with memory controllers, could bring in many forms of heterogeneity. Let's see the dimensions of heterogeneity that such a modern processor could bring in terms of the interconnect system. Firstly, there could be multiple sub-networks. Interconnect networks within each chiplet as well as the network on the integrating interposer. Next, each chiplet could potentially have a clock domain of its own and the interposer network could be working at its own clock domain. Each of those clock domains could be enabled with DVFS mechanisms that further increase the heterogeneity in the interconnect system. These domains would require clock domain crossing units that would synchronize data and control signal transfer across them. Further, the interposer network could be utilizing different physical link bandwidths. Such systems would require serializer deserializer units to convert packets between these link width boundaries. These are just examples of some of the levels of heterogeneity that a 2.5D integrated architecture could bring into the interconnect system. Heterogeneity in modern systems is, however, not limited to 2.5D integrated architectures. Several other forms of architectures constitute heterogeneity in similar or varied forms. Heterogeneous systems such as CPU plus GPU architectures have sub-networks and multiple clock domains to operate the different accelerators. In addition to the system level heterogeneity, modern systems could also bring in interconnect level heterogeneity. This could be in the form of modern wireless NOx, optical physical links, and even DVFS within NOx. Modeling and evaluating these heterogeneities require complex but flexible features within the interconnect simulation infrastructures. Researchers have utilized cycle level simulator for studying interconnects for several decades now. Traditional simulation and modeling methodologies, however, do not feature such a heterogeneous detailing as they were built for homogeneous interconnect systems. They restrict the configuration space available for them, exploring these modern heterogeneous ideas and implementations. In the case of chiplet architecture, for example, having to simulate the interposer and core frequency at the same value restricted researchers from exploring certain bottlenecks. This resulted in inaccuracy of results and possibly suboptimal designs and architectures. This is where heterogarnet comes to the rescue. It adds support for heterogeneous routers, lengths, and multi-frequency domain crossings and link widths, and several other features to the widely popular Garnet network model. For our example of 2.5D integrated architecture, heterogarnet would allow tuning the interposer clock domain individually thereby enabling accurate modeling. I will briefly describe the key features of Heterogarnet before deep diving into the software infrastructure of Garnet as well as Heterogarnet. We will then look at examples of creating complex interconnect configurations. One of the key features of Heterogarnet is support for multiple clock domains within the network. This allows easy and flexible configuration of systems where each part of the network could be configured to operate at a certain clock domain. Heterogarnet also adds a feature to support heterogeneous link and flit widths. Each router could be configured to route flits of a certain width. This can be configured by specifying the width in bytes while creating the router. This can similarly be done for each network link. Unlike Garnet, Heterogarnet allows creation of subnetworks which are mutually exclusive. This is helpful when creating chiplet configurations where intra chiplet network is not connected directly to the network in the interposer. Similarly, in CPU plus discrete GPU simulations, one would require an exclusive GPU interconnect system. Heterogarnet adds two new building blocks the clock domain crossing unit and the serializer deserializer unit. 
These units provide the synchronization services at the clock and link width boundaries. These must be explicitly instantiated during configuration by the user, as we will see later in the examples. So let's look at the software infrastructure of Garnet and HetroGarnet. Garnet is a detailed network on chip model that was introduced in 2009. It is part of the Ruby memory system of Gem5. Garnet 2.0 was added in 2016, which allowed multi stage pipelining within the routers. Hetero Garnet is now being released as Garnet 3.0 and will support complete heterogeneity. Garnet includes complete flexibility in terms of interconnect modeling. It has support for credit based flow control and several routing and deadlock prevention mechanisms for studies. It also has support for synthetic traffic, where one could run artificial traffic through the network to study the system. Garnet is integrated to Ruby and the rest of the Gem5 through message buffers, which are connected to cache controllers and memory controllers. This enables usage of Garnet and HetroGarnet in full system simulations as well, as well as integ easy integration into GPU simulations. Garnet provides several building blocks to create flexible topologies. The topology files reside in config slash topologies where any new topology file can be added and used. The key building blocks are the routers, external links, and the internal links. Routers include the switching mechanism, the crossbar unit, as well as the required output and input buffers. The external links connect the external objects, such as cache controllers, while the internal links are used to connect routers within the network. Each block has configurable parameters such as the link latency or the router latency and in case of HetroGarnet, clock domains and width supported as well. HetroGarnet adds two new building blocks that user can configure in the topology files. The clock domain crossing unit and the serializer deserializer unit. The CDC unit synchronizes data and control flits across the clock domain. To instantiate a CDC, a user will have to set one or more of the CDC flags on the links at the clock boundary. For external links, the user has two options, an internal CDC or an external CDC, which means that the CDC is either instantiated on the internal or the external end of the link respectively. Similarly, for internal links, the user has two options, source CDC or destination CDC, where each refers to one end of the link. One could also have CDCs on both ends if they really want to. Each CDC can be configured to have a specific latency. It could also be configured to have a dynamic latency, which is as a function of the clock frequencies of the involved clock domains. The serializer deserializer unit supports both data and control flits. It has flags similar to the CDC and can be configured to have a specific latency as well. To understand the underlying infrastructure of Garnet, let's briefly go through the lifecycle of a message in the network. For example, let's assume that a cache controller is trying to send a message to another cache controller in the overall system. Note that the source and destination cache controller in this example could be either next to each other or far apart across different levels of heterogeneity. First, the cache controller injects the message into a message buffer which is dedicated to the type of message that the controller is trying to send. Each type of message, be it a get s, get m, or even a simple acknowledgement, is allocated a uni unique virtual network ID and a message buffer to through the cache controller. Next, a network interface is connected to the cache controllers through these message buffers, which receives the messages. The network interface notes the message size and appropriately converts the message into flits. These flits are then stored in outgoing buffers called as flit buffers. Note that HetroGarnet allows multiple outgoing links from a network interface, each going to a different destination. Thus, there could be multiple outgoing flit buffers in a network interface. Next, the network link responsible for transmitting the flit wakes up and stores in a flit buffer of its own. The latency of this operation can be configured by the user through the latency parameter. Note that in this example, the link is an external link. 
The link then wakes up the next consumer in the chain. In our example, let's say that there is a clock domain crossing or a serializer deserializer unit enabled for this link at the internal end. These features are encapsulated in a class called as the network bridge. The network bridge invokes the functionality of CDC or the CERDIS, which appropriately then wakes up the next unit in line, which is usually a router. The flit is captured in one of the input flit buffers of the router. Note that the router can have multiple inputs and thus multiple input flit buffers. The flit then goes through the detailed router pipeline of VC allocation, switch allocation and then crossbar. Eventually, the flit is scheduled to be transmitted through one of the output links. Hedrogarnet also supports credit based flow control. So, control information about the free space is transmitted back to the sender through a separate set of links called the credit links. Once this information reaches the source, it can send more flits. The data message, which was scheduled in the output link, then progresses forward going through multiple such links, bridges and routers. It eventually reaches the destination network interface where all the flits are combined into a message again. That message is then pushed into a return message buffer read by the destination cache controller. This whole process starting from the message buffer to another is encapsulated within the Gem5 Garnet network model. Let's see some examples of creating complex configurations in Heterogarnet. Let's imagine that we are trying to build a topology which has two routers, R0 and R1, each operating at its own clock domain. The internal links between them will need to have a CDC configured at one of the ends. There are several ways in which this can be done. For our example, we take the case where the CDC for both the links is on router R0's end. In this case, step 1 would be to create the two clock domains in the topology file. Step 2, we create the routers and then configure the clock domain to be the respective clocks that we created in step 1. Step 3, we create the internal links L0 and L1, one for each direction, and configure their clock domain appropriately. The CDC flags are set accordingly where link L0 has destination CDC set to be true and the link L1 has source CDC set to be true. A similar setup can be achieved by placing the links in different clock domains. Further, each clock domain here could also be enabled with DVFS where each clock domain changes its frequency dynamically. In our next example, we build a topology where the routers support different sized flits. Thus, we need to configure the routers, links and add serializer deserializer units wherever needed. So let's see. Step 1. We create routers and set their width in bytes. This would ensure that the routers support the right flit sizes. Step 2. We configure the internal links and set their widths depending on the link width domain that they are in. We also set the correct CERDIS flags for both the links. For link L0, destination CERDIS is set to be true and for link L1, source CERDIS is set to be true. Again, there are many ways in which this can be done. It depends on the design that the user is trying to build. Let's now see a brief overview of how one can build a multi-chiplet configuration. Building a multi-chiplet configuration like this can easily be done using the flexibility provided by Heterogarnet. These would be the steps. Step 1. We build the intra-chiplet network for each chiplet. We configure the clock domains, routers, links and all the supplementary units within each chiplet. This can be done once and then duplicated for other chiplets as well. Step 2. We create the network in the interposer similarly. Step 3. We connect the interposer network and chiplet networks using links with CDCs and CERD is enabled at appropriate places. Step 4. We connect the interposer network routers to the memory controllers. Note that all these things can be done through a single Python topology file. Further, individual components can be configured easily by setting the right parameters directly from the Python file. You would have a multi-chiplet configuration like this done in no time. 
Thus, heterogonet allows you to easily configure modern heterogeneous systems and allows us to easily evaluate it using the rest of the GEMFI infrastructure. In summary, heterogonet enables accurate modeling of modern interconnect systems and provides the required features for design exploration. Its flexibility allows evaluation of novel architecture with ease. With heterogonet, Detailed interconnect studies on modern systems like 2.5D integrated systems, heterogeneous architectures, and even emerging interconnect technologies can be easily evaluated accurately. It will be released as Garnet 3.0 to the mainline GEM5 repository. You can contact me for any questions you have in using this tool. If you do end up using this tool, please cite our upcoming paper from DAC. Thank you.